How are we doing folks? So it is almost one year to the day since I ordered my Thrustmaster Boeing yoke. So I thought it'd be quite cool if we took a bit of time and did one of those uh, one year on reviews. Uh, if you are interested in picking one of these up for yourself, there are Amazon affiliate links in the video description, which helps to support the channel at no additional cost to you. It really does help to keep the lights on around here. So it is massively appreciated. So for those of you that have been around the channel for a while, you'll know that for a long time, I got by just with a Thrustmaster Airbus side stick and their throttle quadrant. And for the first year-ish of the channel, I was mostly flying uh, Airbus and in particular the fly-by-wire A32NX. So I, I didn't really feel the need for anything else. Uh, by the way, let me know in the comments if you want a review of that side stick. I'd be more than happy to do it if it's something you'd like. So what happened to make me want a yoke? Well, to be frank, PMDG happened. The release of their incredible 737 gradually drew my attention away from Airbus and it wasn't long uh, before it was by far my favourite aircraft to fly in the sim but something didn't feel right flying it with a side stick. Now to be clear there's nothing wrong with side sticks I mean it's good enough for a, a real Airbus after all but there was a non-small part of my brain that was unhappy using a side stick for an aircraft that I knew was flown with a yoke almost like I was leaving part of the experience on the table. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> leave a comment, let me know. Uh, also, for those of you that are feeling triggered by the fact I'm using a Boeing yoke and an Airbus throttle, I've made a whole separate video detailing my thought process around this. If you're interested, I'll try and link it below or up there somewhere. So the first thing you should be aware of is how large this yoke is. It's a chunky, weighty piece of kit. Thank goodness it has a substantial desk mounting system built right in. Thrustmaster say it has a 100% metal frame, so what you touch when you're holding the yoke is a, a plastic outer layer, but underneath, that's metal, which is great for sturdiness and longevity, but is probably also what likely accounts for the, for the weight of the unit. The other thing I wasn't quite ready for was uh, quite how far it sticks out from your desk. To recreate that classic airliner feel where the yoke is anchored and therefore pivots from the floor, Thrustmaster developed a pendular mechanism, which means the body of the device extends out from the edge of your desk, and it's here that the yoke is anchored, which recreates that feel of having the yoke anchored to the floor without actually having to have it anchored to the floor. It was that that actually made this yoke stand out to me, as there were some others I was considering, um, but they had more of a GA feel, where almost like the yoke is on a, a push-pull pole type system. Uh, it's not that one style of yoke is necessarily better than the other. You, you have to ask yourself, what's the goal? And for me, it was creating that feeling of flying a big commercial jet. It does come with a handy removable stand. So maybe you want to have a tablet propped up here on top for some charts or maybe even just a standard notepad. For me, I found having a tablet there actually got in the way of my screen and it also blocked my Toby Eye Tracker's uh, line of sight. Uh, but every, every setup's different. So for you, it might work, but you know, it's nice to have it as an option. The next thing we need to talk about is the springs within the pendular mechanism. These are what adjust the tension of the yoke. There's room for a total of four, and out of the box, mine came with three installed. Now, I'm not a real pilot, but I have been on a 737 simulator experience day where I used a yoke that I was told came out of a real aircraft. And as soon as I started to use the Thrustmaster Boeing yoke, in its out-of-the-box config with the three springs installed, I immediately thought the movement on the yoke felt quite light um, compared to what I remembered on the sim experience day. I installed the fourth spring and the yoke immediately felt very reminiscent of that yoke on the 737 sim day. Obviously, without having them side by side, it's impossible to know how close they actually are, but regardless, I would definitely recommend installing that fourth spring. In terms of buttons, we've got some Xbox buttons here, similar to what you'd find on a, on a regular Xbox controller, but honestly, I've not used these once. At the base of the yoke, we've got two axes that could be used to control the throttles if you don't have a separate throttle quadrant. I guess you could also map some other things here as well, but seeing as I have a throttle quadrant, I've never used these either. Moving up into the right, we have the gear lever. Now this I do use, even when flying Airbus with my side stick, I'll still use this lever on the yoke to control the gear. It's a simple on-off switch and it feels sturdy enough. Uh, one thing I wish it had was uh, a third state, as in the 737, the gear lever has three positions, down, up, and an off position, but obviously you can't do that in a basic on-off state switch like this one. Looking up to the top, we see got a ton of buttons. Uh, the ones that stick out are the A, B, X, Y sliders. I guess the A, B, X, Y is kind of a nod to the Xbox users. The whole A, B, X, Y thing is kind of irrelevant to me. I've got these mapped to various different things that I want. So each of these buttons can be slid forward and backwards, meaning you could maybe choose one of them, say like the A one, 
Uh, you could have that to control your flaps and maybe you could have the B1 to control your trim uh, and so on. You'll notice on the outer edges we have these circular buttons. Uh, on the right I use that to recenter my view and on the left I use that as the autopilot disconnect button. We also have these two little joystick looking things but be careful they are actually different. The one on the left is like a hat switch which I'll be honest I never actually use in, in practice and the one on the right is like a mini analog stick which I use a lot. It's so handy when taxiing around just to give it a little nudge and just to be able to look out your window a little bit, maybe check for traffic or see where a taxiway might be going. Then once you're done, use that circular button we just mentioned to recenter your view so you can be looking straight ahead. We've got a couple of buttons around the back of the oak that you can kind of pull with your index fingers while you're flying. Uh, you could maybe use these for push to talk if you are a VAT simmer, or in my case, I use the one on the right hand side to turn my Toby eye tracker on and off. And the one on the left hand side to recenter the head tracking should I have uh, squirmed around in my seat and thrown the head tracking off a little bit. Other than that, that's kind of all the buttons done. Um, so there's only one thing for it. Let's land a plane with this yoke and see what it's really like. So here we are on final approach. We're flying an ILS approach, uh, but obviously we're flying it manually. There'll be no auto land today because the whole point is to check out this yoke. Um, I'll be the first to say that when I got this yoke, I was terrible with it. Having spent so much time on a side stick, using a yoke felt completely weird to me. So don't be surprised if you find the same, but equally don't be concerned. It won't take long uh, before you get used to the feel. You'll know you've cracked it, say, when you do it a crosswind landing and you've got the plane crabbed and you're perfectly tracking the center line of the runway. It's almost like it becomes an extension of yourself. Also, don't do what I did. Initially, I had my setup in like a first officer's config where I had my throttles on the left. So I was getting used to this yoke, flying it uh, right-handed when I was on final, keeping my left hand on the throttles, only to then uh, think, actually, no, I'm the throttles on my left to kind of make it like a, a captain's position, and then you have to relearn the whole thing all over again. So my advice is make a decision early and stick with it. So short final now, and we're just making small little adjustments with the yoke, keeping everything where it should be. Looking ahead, holding the flare, and there we are, down. Not my finest, but I will definitely take that. So what do I really think of this joke? And the way I kind of frame these questions to myself is I ask another question and that is if it were to break tomorrow and it was out of warranty would I buy another one? And the answer for me is a resounding yes. It's become such a central piece of my simming setup I really wouldn't want to be without it. I keep my side stick around for when I'm flying Airbus, such as the Headwind A330, the Phoenix A320, the Fly-By-Wire A320 Neo, but more or less everything else, uh, such as the PMDG 737, the ATR, the Airbus A300 for mini builds, is flown using the yoke. And we've got some awesome yoke-based airliners coming out, hopefully, this year, um, including the much-anticipated Boeing 777 from PMDG and the MD-11 from TFDI Design. So I think it's safe to say we're going to be clocking up a lot of hours on this yoke. Speaking of clocking up lots of hours, let's talk about durability. It feels just like the day I bought it. There's no weird creaks or clunkiness or anything weird about it. It is as solid as a rock, probably in part due to that metal frame construction underneath that Thrustmaster spoke about. I think without investing a ton of money into like a full-on home cockpit, maybe using repurposed yokes from actual aircraft where you've rewired them to work over USB, I'd say this is probably as close as you're going to get to the real thing if you're flying on a flight simulator at home while keeping your wallet semi intact. I really do think it's a fantastic bit of kit and I honestly wouldn't want to be without it. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please do consider hitting that like button. It really does help the video and the channel a ton. Um, also, we're coming up on 10k subs. So if you haven't already, hit that sub button. We do a load of content on the channel, uh, this kind of thing, as well as live streams, uh, all, all the flight sim stuff. And uh, let me know in the comments if you've got any questions about the yoke. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you all so much for watching. Take the very best care of yourselves. And as always, happy flying.